Dead by Daylight is an asymmetrical multiplayer horror game where one player takes on the role of killer and four players take on the role of survivor. The killer's goal is to find and kill all four survivors, and the survivor's goal is to escape and survive. Go figure. The game is a little over seven years old now, and although I haven't been around since the very beginning, I've been around for long enough to see the many highs and lows this game has had to offer. But through all the nerfs, buffs, reworks, and additions, one thing has remained consistent. The community is full of whiny crybabies, to put it nicely. Although grown men crying over a video game isn't exclusive to Dead by Daylight, I personally see it constantly, whether it's on Twitter, YouTube, Reddit, or Twitch. The shit he pulled only works on garbage survivors. No, it's a meme strategy for a reason, dumbass. You know, I think we will all be in agreement that the survivors I go against are just a little bit better. I didn't really have a thought out way of structuring this video at the time of scripting, so bear with me as I list off what I think is wrong with the community and possibly how to fix it. Toxicity in video games is nothing new, from the classic teabagging your opponent's corpse to the ye old yelling of racial slurs in COD lobbies. The problem with defining what's toxic in Dead by Daylight is that there's no surefire way of doing so, at least not in a way that everyone will unanimously agree. It'd be impossible to list everything that's ever been labeled as toxic, from the usual annoyances like teabagging and clicking your flashlight at the killer, to simply running strong builds so you can win. For most of these things, you know what you're loading into. Not every match is going to be your ideal killer on your favorite map or against four baby solo cures. And although I'd argue that teabagging is much less problematic than leaving all remaining survivors to bleed out and die, most of what I've seen has been called toxic are simply parts of the game intended for use. Okay, that wasn't part of the video or anything, but what happened there? Add-ons and offerings are put into this game to be played. People bring the strongest stuff because they want to win, so I have a hard time calling any of these things toxic. And yes, there's an argument to be made for perks, items, add-ons, and playstyles being too strong or boring and needing a change. But crying, Wah, full meta build, oh what a toxic player, won't make people take you seriously. In these cases, I think you should try playing on the other side and bring whatever build you deem unproblematic for multiple matches and see if your opinion changes. But most toxic things you can do are completely harmless. People go into some kind of blind rage when a survivor points at them. And I promise the nodding killer won't show up in your closet tonight. You'll be okay. And most toxic ways of playing can be countered. A four-man sabo or flashlight squad can be easily dismantled since they'd probably be too busy running around to be doing gens. And a face camping killer allows for an easy three-man escape if you just split gens and leave, as boring as that may be. Except three gen skull merchant. <laughs> three gen skull merchant. I think true in-game toxicity comes into play when one side holds the game or a player hostage, like body blocking a survivor in a corner so they can't leave, or of course hackers messing with streamers and not allowing them to play. But I think where most of the toxicity is shown is outside of the game. Whether it be post-game chat, or messages over Xbox, or goofy streamers complaining about what the other side did in the game. I promise, whatever happened is not that serious, and you shouldn't tell someone to kill themselves just because they teabagged you at the exit gates. The internet has made people very comfortable saying whatever they want about whoever in a way that they wouldn't even think about saying in person. Name calling, bullying, and the spreading of misinformation just because they can. Which leads me to... Twitter is generally known for being a cesspool of shitty takes and opinions where like-minded individuals congregate under the same post to further reinforce their own said shitty takes. From really cringy bait for engagement points from Daddy Elon to genuinely weird opinions. This sentiment extends well past Dead by Daylight by the way. And as wrong as they may be, opinions are opinions and everyone is entitled to them. The problem arises when people use their platform to shame, put down, or even harass others who don't share the same opinions. Keep in mind that I'm still talking about a video game and not some real world issue that actually, you know, matters. Don't get me wrong, I do believe that healthy discussion between two or more people with differing opinions is fine, even beneficial. But let's be real, more often than not, these differing opinions over the internet don't tend to go over so smoothly. At best, you'll probably get a, oh well, obviously you just play a low MMO, why else would you think hook grabs are unhealthy for the game? Like, oh, you just suck because you disagree is an argument I see so often and I just find it silly. And I don't have to mention that the internet is home to actual malicious people who attempt to ruin lives or leak personal information just because they don't like someone. Many of these points are relevant while talking about toxic streamers too. They use their followings to be assholes to people they play with or against or even someone in their own chat for whatever reason they see fit in an almost mob-like fashion. 
It's really cringy and also really sad to see these people, typically adults, get mad and act extremely poorly to other people over a video game. Like I said, anonymity makes people very bold. Having a following makes people very bold. And people will continue to say what they want behind a screen for... forever. Yeah, I'm sure you've heard it before. Your mom said it after you fell off Rainbow Road. Your friend said it after he whooped you in Madden. But now you're hearing it from me. Anger is normal. I've gotten mad at video games, I'm sure you have, and even our favorite content creators have. But then there's how far each person should take it. It's dead by daylight. You're not playing for thousands of dollars, you're not fighting against the same boss for days on end, the killer got a wacky hit on you and now your life's ruined. Game director Matthew Cote got a lot of flack once for telling someone to play another game because they're upset over killer. But honestly, he is 100% right. But currently no matter what, it's just filled with stress and anger, killers aren't feared anymore. Uh, do you have any plans or ideas how you would like to improve the killer imp experience? Well, I, I would say maybe try Survivor for a bit. Uh, no, but it's true. I mean, change it up. Maybe you're just tired, you know. Or play something else for a, a week. Try Civilization or something. Just for a refreshing change. If you're playing a game and it makes you mad, like really mad, less cuss at the ceiling and more break your controller, then it's probably time to change it up or take a break from video games entirely. And I don't mean standard shit talking, hell, I'm all for that. I've definitely talked my talk before. But if a game is causing you real anger, stress, or anxiety, then why are you playing it? At the end of the day, the game is meant to be fun and enjoyable, and despite the many unfun things that may happen, we queue up again because we like the game. And if you find yourself repeatedly having a bad time, it may be time to take a break. I'm sure most people watching remember the Gen Kiki meta, specifically Eruption. I absolutely hated this perk, more than anything in the game before or after. And you'd see the same Call of Brine, Overcharge, Eruption combo in every single game. I dropped the game for a good while until they changed it. Yeah, I did a little bit of talking, definitely had some sore winner and sore loser moments after seeing multiple killers from the same build. I realized I wasn't having fun and I took a break. So people who hate seeing Made for this or playing against 3 Gen Skull Merchant could do the same. But don't go harass these players for playing how they want to play. And jokes aside, I understand that outside factors can heavily influence people's reactions to completely unrelated things like video games. Although it's not a justification, it is a reason. Take it from me, it's not hard to look at the way you're acting and realize you're in the wrong. Everyone in DVD is just another person trying to enjoy a game, and without them, there wouldn't be a game to play. A little bit more of a serious video today, but uh, thanks for watching. Every single view means a lot to me. And uh, hopefully my actual Dead by Daily video is out soon. Um, but uh, next week should be something new, Coraline. So subscribe to see when that one's out. Might start posting on my Twitter more often. So that'll be in the description along with my Twitch where I play random video games every now and then. So uh, check that out and I'll see you guys later. Second. <laughs> you look like an easy drawing named Willis. What does this mean? <laughs> What is this? It means what it means.